This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice in it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Father, I come before you right now, knowing, dear God, that you have given us another day, another opportunity. So everyone who is under the sound of my voice, dear God, they are alive. So let them raise their hands, dear God, and worship you in the power, worship you with songs, worship you with prayer and fasting. Dear God, I come before you right now at this hour asking you dear God Jesus to use me dear God let this word dear God that I studied let dear God this subject dear God Jesus be acceptable in your sight dear God I pray father because I realize that God you've called us to pray you said men are always to pray and not to faint you said that God Jesus we always dear God to have a prayerful heart I come dear God with the arsenal of prayer as I teach this lesson dear God I want dear God to know in my heart and know that you are directing people to come to know you as your as their personal savior that they will repent dear God at the end of this program dear God someone will say they've been blessed and they have come to know Jesus as their personal savior I pray dear God for 99.9 the most of the listeners in this community and the um, wopfm.com I thank God for all of them, dear God, that listen, and those on Facebook, and those who are here late, I ask you, dear God, Jesus, to bless them. Bless them spiritually, financially, emotionally, mentally, especially, dear God, spiritually, that they will pray and seek your face. I pray for our community. I pray for our mayors. I pray for our governor. I pray for our world. I pray for those in Florida who are suffering. I pray, dear God, what's going on in, uh, to help the family in Cuba, in the Caribbean. I pray, dear God, because I know there are seven continents. I ask you to touch, dear God deliver people set them free set them free their God from their sins and I thank you in advance their God for those that are going to come to know you today in Jesus name I pray amen good morning again this is Saturday morning and I want you to get your Bible because um this lesson is talking about the arsenal of prayer okay go in second chronicles 7 12 Psalms 47, Daniel, Daniel has a lot involved in this, Daniel 9 and Matthew, and I want you to realize that in this teaching, I have been blessed and I have received a double portion, and I just want you to know that you will, just stay with me, tag someone, because when God gives us a blessing and he gives us a blessing, we want to share it, we want to let others know, hey, I've been blessed. You know how we go and we go to church, we receive our message and we text and we tag and we share. And that's what I want you to do because, again, I want to give credit to all the, um, the doctors and the theologians with the Church of God um, Sunday School book. I, I, I'm so glad God ordained people way in advance. He, he has um, um, revealed some stuff to me and shown me some things and some people that we are assigned to each other to carry this great commission, working together with our Bibles and with our Sunday school books and with teaching. So I thank God for that. First John 5 read that God is a light and in him there's no darkness. All believers have been called out of darkness. Peter said we shall proclaim the praises of him who called us in, out of darkness into marvelous light. That's First Peter 2 and 9. Light cannot tolerate darkness. So God will not tolerate darkness in those who claim to be his own. If we claim to have fellowship with Christ, but still walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. That's 1 John 1 and 6. Our lesson deals with prayer, okay, that is categorized by praise and thanksgiving and fasting and uniting with other believers. In this lesson, you're going to see a lot of praise, thanksgiving, fasting, and all that go together to really get your prayers through sometimes. And like I said, you need to get your Bible because some of this I have to jump over because I cannot read all this lesson all together. It could take two, to, two and a half to three hours. But you need to jot down so you can go back. The central truth of this lesson is this. Well, the theme is prayer. It's about prayer. I told you God has been dealing with me with prayer and teaching this because we need to know prayer is an offensive on a defensive weapon for winning spiritual victory. We're talking about spiritual victories. The focus is explore, unemploy spiritual weapons available to Christians through prayer. 
various scriptures I'm going to be dealing with. So get your Bible. Go and take. I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplication with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. Daniel 9 and 3. Okay, we're going to be talking about praises, like I said, fasting and corporate prayers in this lesson. And I want you, uh, again, like I said, to be prayerful, be thankful. Ask God to touch your heart as you study this lesson and ask him to deal with your heart. Because we cannot continually be involved in prayer and yet not being successful with it. Because we, we lie to others by trying to convince them that we are deeply spiritual. We lie to God by trying to be good, do good works, you know. Our lessons deal with how can none of these elements, you know, praise and worship and thanksgiving, none of these elements work if there is not an honestly, if there is not an honestly before the Lord. We got to be real. We got to be genuine. We got to be honest when we come before God. Cleanse our heart, oh God. Creating us the right spirit and the right attitude that God Jesus. So we won't be telling lies to God by trying to do good works, being faithful to the church activities, giving, offering, and so on. We lie to others by justifying sin on the basis of some unmet fleshly need. Put together, we cannot, okay? Put together, we convince others that we are walking in light while really we are living in darkness. Okay, praise, thanksgiving, fasting, and praise with others are tremendously tools for the believers. But they must be permissive on honestly asking God to remove their hidden darkness within them. And we as people of God, especially Christians, we all fall, come short of the glory of God. We all now and then. That's why we got to go daily before God. Ask God to cleanse us, creating us the right heart and repent as we go along. Because we know, as it says now, and as in John 1 and 9 declare. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Remember that now. All praise and thanksgiving. Okay, and Jehoshaphat, he bowed his head and his face to the ground. And all of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before him, worshiping the Lord. Sometimes we just got to come humbly, bowing, praising God. Our face in his face, our, our feet, our, 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 fa our face down sometime, calling out to God. Jehoshaphat was the fourth king of Judah. So he was, okay, I'm going to skip that to his generation. He was zealous for the Lord. Are you zealous? Listen, we need zealous people. Be zealous and be genuine. Be, um, 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 I guess you call bold for the Lord. He saw God's face in everything he did. Everything Jehoshaphat did, he sought the Lord, and that's what God was showing his lesson. Some things we don't want to seek God about, and we want to go and do our own thing. God is calling us America. He is calling us people of God who are listening. Everybody in the sound of my voice, this lesson is for you. God give us, okay? He give us individuals to help us, okay? He felt that the quality of the nation's moral character was directly related to a zeal for the Lord. Thus, he went about to get rid of every form of idolatry. America, the Caribbean, other continents, if you listen to Jehoshaphat and study his lesson, we got to get rid of the idolatry, like he said, okay? And our nation needs a moral character, okay? He instituted a system, listen to this now. He instituted a system of public institution, appointing priests and Levites to travel from town to town, teaching the law. We need to take this Bible from island to island, town to town, state to state. Set. Okay, I, I, there's a lot of lesson, and y'all get what I'm saying. He put in place a better administration for justice with courts presiding over by priests, Levites, and leading nobles. We need to get leaders. Come on, leaders. He insisted that all judges be high character. Come on, now, character is so important today. If you don't have a character, you need to cleanse that. We're going to go with sinners' prayer today. You need to get your character right with God. Come on, now. He set up strong defense. That's when, he, when in a coalition of the Moabites, he had coalition, like you know, with the Moabites, Amabites, and others declare war on Judah and plan an our invasion. Lord, show me. We're going to have, like they said, destruction. You're going to have enemies come against what God is doing. And I'm going to try to relate this. 
um, show you all the different similes and and the different um, um, what word I'm saying superlatives and all of the English part in this because it's all through this lesson. Okay, you have to see it. How can we apply this Bible? You know, we read it, we study it. You know, I remember them saying, but how are we applying it to our life today? Come on. We could look at back in the Old Testament, New Testament. We could look back at Jehoshaphat and Dale, Daniel and Solomon and all them. But we are living in 2021. God is calling us. He's talking to us. This Bible was written for us. How are we applying it to our life? And this what is this is trying to help you. How can you apply this? Get your people. Get your leaders. Get pastors, deacons. Apply. When a coalition come, he had Jehoshaphat to proclaim a national fast. Come on. Church fast. We got to call it. A nation fast, Tennessee fast, Cleveland fast, fast and pray. We got to get this thing together and do it right. We got good example here in the Bible. He brought the people together in the temple courtyard and he led them in prayer, humbling himself, himself, and declaring their utterance dependence on God. That's the problem we found out today. Many people, they are not totally and utterly depending on God. Come on, who are you depending on? That man, that woman, that whatever, that job, all those things, you know, it's failing us already, okay? God bless you for tuning in, um, my sister, um, I'm Ken in Sydney. I want you to know is this, is that. When I was studying this lesson, there were so many things in here, and I got to hurry it up. God began to show me. He began to reveal. Because when God began to reveal, you, he revealed some things to you for your community, your church. And you better write it down and do it. Because he's not going to allow me to get up 3, 4 o'clock in the morning and study and study each day and put a lesson before you just for me to talk. This is for you to help your church, help your community, help your people. And whatever he's saying to you, he said, be not afraid, nor dismayed by reason for great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Okay, this was, was, was similar to the words David proclaimed when approaching Goliath. Okay, the Lord saved it. That's David Goliath's story, remember. Okay, then he gave the battle strategy for the next day. Jehoshaphat, so he had strategies. You have those strategies and, and methods for this enemy today. You see, because we, 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 the enemy is out in, in, in people, individuals, okay? Demonic spirits. And you better have something in you to cast them out and rebuke them. I'm telling you, many of these churches are open. You better get ready how to have people who can design spirit and cast out demons in the name of Jesus. And if you don't have that Holy Ghost power, get someone who have it. Because these wicked spirits are genuine and real. But God, Holy Ghost, and His power is more powerful. The Bible said, when we come, before him, and we believe and we trust God's word, we, we get power and authority to heal the sick, raise the dead, and cast out anything. That means demons and demonic spirit in the name of Jesus, the Lord said. Okay, let me see where I'm at. Okay, our text and Jehoshaphat respond to all that had just occurred. Even though the battle was still a day away, you see, we got a plan ahead. He rejoiced that God had sent an answer and will intervene. God will intervene on behalf of you before the enemy come. Bradley County, Pope County. We have the revival coming. We have people praying. We have individuals. We have groups. We have churches. We have headquarters. We have teams. Okay? And we got to believe. But just remember, like he said, okay, God, before all it, God will intervene. Just remember this. This is the opposite of what happened when the children of Israel. There are some examples in here, but I'm going to jump over that. The overriding principle is God's people should praise him on credit for blessing, not yet manifestation. Okay? What he's saying here in this is that we know God's going to bless us and we're going to go out and do the work. But before it happened, the Bible said, you know, let's praise him, give him credit, and let's start praising him in advance. Because we know the blessing coming. I got to go on. I'll go on. Okay? A powerful choir that choir is singing. Okay, 2 Chronicles, you need to get 2 Chronicles 20. And when they begin to sing and to praise the Lord, when they begin to sing and praise the Lord, the Lord, listen, sent ambushments against the children of Amna, Abman, Moab, and Mount Zion, which come against Judah, and they were submitted. Okay, they were, were submitted. Let me tell you, when people come against the church, and they come against what God is doing in these last and evil days. Don't you fear. Because some things God will make, it will, it will look like it's negative and it look like you're losing. Look at David. But remember, remember, just remember this scripture. Okay? 
God, he is going to take control. Oddly to slay, for the children of Amorite Mom stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir. Oddly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy another. Okay, but guess what happened? The next day, Jehovah, Jehoshaphat and the choir led the way to indicate mountain passes in the desert of Tekoa. Let me tell you something, Tekoa. Let me tell you something. Praise, worship, fasting together. I'm telling you. I'm going to tell you the enemy know who's fasting. So you better get some fast going on. Okay? Some things the enemy don't know. But he cannot defeat our prayer warrior who is on her face in ashes crying out to God. Or he praying and seeking God's face and fasting. Because you are double coated. Okay? Just remember. They were fasting. And at this moment, they began to sing the Lord's songs. Okay, I'm skipping over. There was so much plunder. The man of Judea cut. You have to read this and not carry it away. Why well, should they? Okay, I'm going to skip to prayer at midnight. Okay? The devil will try to bring things, both the victory and the material. Um, 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 God used what the devil even tried to bring against you. Okay? What, if things what the enemy bring against you, God will use that. Okay, this is what happened. Brought both victory and material gain for God's people. Go to Acts 16, 25 and 26. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. People will hear you when you pray. Yes, they'll hear you. Sometimes we got to pray loud. Yes, sometimes we got to be silent. But people hear heard Silas. Sometimes you in this press, you, you need, you discouraged. You need to pray. And we'll see that lady in this list. And suddenly there was a great earthquake. And the foundations of the prison were shocking. And immediately all the doors were open. And everyone's bonds were loosened. Everyone. Because of the way Paul and Silas had no doubt. They were in the will of God. That's another thing. You got to be sure you're in God's will. This, this, this is no time to be questioned. Am I? If? And if. You better know you in God's will. Because when you are tested. And as we get close to the, to the last days. As we get close to the Antichrist spirits, like, you know, some of them are already out. And we get close to the coming of the Lord. You better know you in God's will. Because when these trials come and when God starts testing you, you better stand and know that you are in the will of God. They had responded and they sailed to Philippi, the chief of Macedonia. Few or any Jews were there. So they had gone to Carginites River out there. And here, let me skip that. There they met Lydia. Okay, listen to the story. They met Lydia, who quickly responds to the gospel and give them a place and a home to stay. People gonna listen. People gonna listen. Okay, people be listening to you. Don't worry about those who listen. Not after this long, a demon woman, a girl came out. As you begin to teach and you go forward, and as you begin to witness, you talk. Apply what you see going on here. They talking about demons. Don't we have them here today? Demons gonna come out. I'm gonna try paraphrases and I'm more than they. Paul eventually got frustrated at her. This demon girl came out. And the cause her owner to lose um luc lucrative fortune business. Those who was doing the business, you can have people, there are people that are doing all kind of business that's unpleasing to God. You know it. All kind of undercover, ungodly business. You know some of those business they're doing. You better don't get involved in that. I'm telling you, don't get involved in anything that's not of this world, or that's not in this book. I'm telling you. I'm, I'm paraphrasing some of this because I want you to see. Read that in the Bible and you'll see what happened in there. So they stir up. People stir up. Uh, 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 stir the group of kings, Paul and Silas, causing them to, to be stripped, stripped, you know, beaten and thrown in jail. Some of you can get thrown in jail and things going to happen. Some of us, you know, we've been through a lot and we do and more things. But don't worry. Don't you worry. Don't you have doubt. Who is listening right? Sheila Batson and all y'all who listening. First lady down there in Nashville. Let me tell you something. Pastor's wife and first lady. All, let me tell you all something. When these things come, don't you worry. Don't you have no doubt. Because once you know you are anchor and your anchor hall and grips the solid rock. And you're praising and you're fasting, wishing of God. God got you. God got you. He got you. And you got to know he got you. And you got to believe. And I'm talking later in the scripture where some Christians, they don't believe this word. They're Christians for some of these things and they don't believe it. And I'm going to show you in the scripture. We're talking about it. Because some people don't understand and don't comprehend 
the attributes of who God is and what God is saying in these last and evil days, the time we are in. Let me skip to some of the results of prayer and praise. This is verse 27 and 28. And the keeper of the prison awoke of the sleep and seeing the prison door open. Okay? And you all know who don't know, really know your Bible. You need to study this sword. And they have killed himself, supposing that the prisoner had fled. Okay? Verse 20. But Paul cried out with a loud voice saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. There are people out there. We got to stop them from committing suicide. We got to stop them in the depressed. We got to cry out to these people and get help. Like I said, apply this word to you and your family, your friends, your people who you miss ministering to. How can we help people come to Jesus? How can we get people saved? Look in the scripture. Paul attention quickly went to the jailer. Who was your attention going to? Who was about to be killed himself? Come on now. Romans law stated that if a God lose a prisoner, he will receive the same punishment that had been set for his prisoner. Thus, there must have been some in the jail waiting for execution. The jailer decided quickly that suicide was a preferable way to die. Paul said no. Paul immediately. And we got to stop these people. We got to stop these young people in the name of Jesus. Stop them. Know them. Know the signs of, of suicide. Study it. Know who are depressed. Know who are discouraged. Know who are downhearted. Know them and go after them. The Bible said in here in this scripture how we who are, are, are strong, we are the better burden of the week, and we have to take on some people um, and pain. We got to have a burden for them. Paul immediately intervened, saving not only the man's life, come on now, but bringing him and his whole household. We got to get some household saved. Not only saved, get them sanctified and rebuke those spirits that's in some houses. I'm telling you. Demon spirits are wrong. I know them. You see, one thing, uh, um, um, you remember the man when those demons came to, um, in, in the pig, you know, Paul, I know, I know you, but I know, I know demons. You know how I know them? Because they can't stand the Holy Ghost in me. When they see me and I come, and that's how they have to be with you. You better have the Holy Ghost in you because you better know them demons because all you do, you stand. They can't stand the Holy Ghost. They can't stand what's in you. So you don't have to even speak. The Holy Ghost speak for you. I'm telling you. Prayerful determination. Prayer with fasting. In Daniel 9, 3. Daniel 9, 3 to 9. Read that please. Prayerful determination. And I set my face. See, Daniel set my face unto the Lord. I'm telling you, I learned from this, honey. I'm keeping my face in Jesus' face. To seek by prayer and supplication with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. You better interpret Go and, 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 and interpret that what's ashes and stuff and get before God. Humble yourself. Babylon fell to Medias and the, the, the Persia, Persians. Daniel knew in advance that this will happen. We know something's going to happen. But don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. The Bible said God didn't give us the spirit of fear. Intimidate. Power, love, and a sound mind. Nothing. He had been to, to interpret the writing of the wall in King. Belshazzar, Belshazzar, whatever it is. God forgive me. Y'all forgive me. Okay, let me go. Okay, this is what happened. Almost 70 years early, Daniel had been given the interpretation of Nebuchadnezzar's dream. In that dream, the head of gold will be replaced by a chest and arm of silver. Babylon was the head. And Median and Persians were the chest and arms. God's going to show you some signs. He's going to show you some prayer. Okay, you all get ready. Get ready. There's some great things God said in the scripture. Look, I'm doing some new things. Get ready. Even before the prophetic dream, however, Jeremiah had predicted the fall of Babylon. Jeremiah 29 and 12. Thus, it was natural desire on Daniel's part at the time to go back and study what the prophet had said. Let us get into this Bible. Let us study some of the prophetic word. Oh, God could reveal to us what's going on. What's going in your home? What's going in your church? What's going in your community? What's going in your job? What's going on? You need to know. If you said you were called by God and you were a leader, you need to know what's going on. You just can't stay in your little house and, and, and allow some things to happen and you see it. You need to open your mouth and say, God, cry out like Jehoshaphat. Cry out. Cry out and pray and sing fast. Ask God. Okay? Ask God to help you. Help us. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. America, we need help. Okay? 
God's word is preserved. Let me see. I want to, no matter what people try, God's word is preserved. Jesus would later say, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word, he said, will never. He said, my word will never. Never means never pass away. Matthew 25, 24 and 35. Okay. In the stroll, Daniel read that the captivity will last for 70 years. Okay. It was easily deductive to make that the period was just about over. And the deliverance of the Jews will come soon. Soon come. So he also understood that the reason for the captivity was divinely disciplined. Okay, come on. Some things are just God's plan and His providence. Come on, divinely plan. We gotta understand who God is. What is some things we don't. We want perfect life, and we want you to go. Like I said, we are fallible, and things gonna happen to us. But we have to know that these are in the plans of God. If you in God's hands, and He got you. And you say, and you repair, and you you seeking God. Don't worry, don't you worry, don't you fret. God's never fail us yet. He also understood that the reason for the captivity and these things that happen, God will then bring on this life. Would finally lead back to the restore of blessings, knowing that confession was required for discipline to end. Okay, you notice that confession was required for this discipline to end. We gotta confess. It's confession, confession. We gotta confess, even though he personally was not guilty. Listen to Daniel now. Some of us, we got to take on some people. He was not guilty, but Daniel identified with those sins as if he were worst sinner of all. Sometimes, yes, we got to come. We see people, they just living like sin is something they think, they even don't want to want to, want to, want to give their life. But we have to sometimes just come and ask God, Lord, help me to carry that burden for them. Help me, dear God, to help them. Help me, dear God, to just... Be a light to them. Help me to live right so they could see. Okay? And that's what Daniel had to do. Individual confess for corporate sins. Okay? Daniel, go in Daniel 9, like I said. It's not, in, someone's not included in this lesson. They're saying, but let me tell you something. I'm on five, six. Okay. I have to hurry up. Go. And prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession and said, O Lord, the great and the dreadful God. See, some people who know there's a dreadful God. He's a loving God, but it's a dreadful God. Keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandment. Listen to this again. Read this because this got me. Listen. And I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession and said, O oh Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandment. Commandment. Yes, you love God, but you got to keep his commandment. Keep his commandment. You know, I can't go through all the commandments. There's not just 10. It's a Bible full in this You need to know Daniel understood both that the necessity of repentance and the power of intercession. Were all the God's people ready to turn back to the Lord? No, but Daniel will repent for them in their seat, in their, in their stead. Okay. He acknowledged the sins of the nation and took the blame personally. Now, this ain't for everybody because everybody ain't ready for this. You know, you repent of your sins. Right now, if you don't know Jesus, your personal savior, you need to repent of your sins. But some of us, we all know what I'm talking about. Our children, some of us, our grandkids, people who we know backslid, who've been in the church 30, 40 years now, they go up old and say, we need to come to God and say, God, I knew this person. And we got to carry their heart and we got to plead and we got to ask Lord, oh Lord, help them. Help them. How can they go back in the, and, and, and dig back in the mud and in sin like that? Come on now. God is good. I want you now, if you don't know Jesus, come on, let's call on Jesus. As I get into this lesson, call on Jesus. Ask God to acknowledge him and recognize him. Ask him to repent. As I go, I'm talking about sin. You need to repent of your sin as I go along. Just repeat it. Say, God, come into my heart. Wash me, Lord. Purge me. Create in me a clean heart, oh God. God, people will reproach. Uh, listen what he said in this. In this as an intercession, Daniel appealed to the Lord on three grounds, okay? Okay? Three grounds he asked the Lord. We got to do this for America. Y'all know what's going on in America. I mean, y'all who in other country who listening now, y'all need to get your country. I I'm going to focus, Lord, on America. You know it's going in America. I don't have to go into details. You know, God's people were reproached among the heathen nations. Come on. God was known to be God, God was known to be merciful and must show mercy to his own. We were founded on, on, on God we trust on our money. God's reputation was at stake. Come on. God, we have to, 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 to let people know God can heal you. He can save you. He can deliver you. Okay? This is the word of God. And this is God's word. But if you don't open your mouth and repent, you have to open your mouth. I can't repent for you. I could tell you, 
You have to do it. The beginning of captivity would be, I'm, I'm going to skip to that. It's the disciple. The discipling of the captivity did not bring some good results. Never again will Jews allow themselves to fall. And this is a story in idolatry and the word could be revealed. Also, the people had never obeyed a command to let the land enjoy a um, sabbatical rest. Okay, sabbatical rest. The 70 years represent 70 sabbatical years that uh, have been missing over the centuries. Okay, when the people return, the land could again be blessed. Some of us, God is calling us back. Take it. You you study what he's saying. You Daniel will see the fruit for the the fruition of God's faithfulness. He was about eighty one old. Sometimes it can take us. Some you've been praying for your children for years. You know to be saved, to come to know Jesus. Keep praying, keep believing. He was eighty one. They said he was too old to return, but he was confident that Israel will be restored. Word of God, how can you apply this to your family? How can you apply this to your church, your community, like I said? Okay, sanctified fast. This is Joel. Go in Joel 1, 12 and 14. Sanctified fast. Okay, the, the wine is dried on the fig tree, lavishes on all the trees and the palm trees and the apple trees and all joy. Let's grip yourself and lamy. E priests, hall, ministers, all to come. Light, night and sackcloth. E ministers, God is calling us. He's calling us all night revival, weekend revival, locked in. You remember we used to go and lock in, you pray to or Friday night or Sunday morning. What happened? Come on, let's bring some of these prayer back. We need for people to be saved. And for people to be saved, we got to cry out on them. We have to ask, Lord, I sanctify thee to fast. All the solemn assemblies gather, the elders and all the inhabitants in the land and into the house of the Lord. God, cry unto the Lord, cry unto the Lord. Cry unto the Lord. Some pray you got to really depend on what type of prayer. Sometimes you just got to get out, open your mouth, and cry out and scream. Sometimes you have to. I've been there. But you say, Lord, where are you? You just got to cry out. What's your situation? Your circumstance? It is almost impossible to determine exactly when Daniel ministered the prophet. Little is known. Okay. Okay. This is something that he, okay. Go back to true worship. This is what God is calling us. Go back to true worship because there he was. He was commissioned to call the people. He called them to true worship. There was a plague. Oh, oh, Lord, show me this. He said there was a plague. Listen, going down here, like I said, there was a plague on a drought going on both caused by the people staying from, staying from the commandments. They were living in sin. When you put it together, his words put exclamation to the to the hard times and give a redemp. He, he give a remedy for once again bringing divine blessing. In our modern world, come on, America, what we got to do is let's go back. Let's realize, I heard, and we got to pray. We got to start wearing our masks again. Like they said, coach your mask. Something else coming, another plague. They said, what's going on? Ask God, this is time for us to get on our knees and sackle on ashes and get on our face and lift our hands and sing. Get the choir, the fasting, everybody come on together, united in prep. Call the assembly of prep. Let's cry out to God. God is calling us to obey the Bible, obey his word, crying out to him. Okay, this is it. The farming and, and, and what happened. And I'm, okay, y'all know what's going on. I'm not going to that. Joel described a plague of Lucas, and that's what happened to them. Ours is a little different. Y'all know what ours is. Once the Lucas came true, ours is deadly. People are dying. People are dying. Every family, everybody has been, um, um, I guess you call them, I'm affected. Every time you turn around, okay, thus it caused despair and was as things happen, things happen. No one could survive it. Oh God, intervention. That's it. We better look for God intervention. God got intervene, America. Y'all who listen, passes on to someone. I'm telling you, WPFM. God got to intervene on behalf of this nation, and the way He's gonna intervene, we have to ask Him. We have to cry out, and we have to seek His face. We have that Jesus is 40 days. Jesus fasting on. I'm not going to read that part because you read that in Matthew 4, 1 to 4. Jesus had to fast. He had to fast too in the wilderness because he was tempted by the devil. Many of us, we get temptations. That's why you got to keep fasting and praying. We get trials and we get tribulation. Know the difference between your trial and your tribulation. Know what to do. Jesus had come through some amazing high points. At his baptism, and you all know that I read you John the Baptist, and I didn't skip that. The baptism was validation. Jesus identified as the Messiah. Jesus joined about able to do his mission. And having been sent to prepare, eat away of the Lord. That was John the Baptist, okay? 
No one, including Jesus, I'm going to skip that. From the spiritual heights, Jesus was suddenly sent into the wilderness by the Spirit to be tempted by the devil after he was fasted for 40 days. That's what I tell you, you need to fast in advance because these things are going to happen. He was sent. The Holy Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness and fasted. And he just came on 40 days fast. That's why, he, oh Lord. Every, every revelation from God as well as every spiritual. Like again, I said, I give credit. A lot of these things I'm reading come from other theologians from the Church of God. As many of them. Um, um, Cole Meyer, Dr. Cole Meyer and Dr. Awuda. So I, um, as many of them, I can't remember the name. I didn't bring the book, but they know who they are. We thank God for these people because the revelation, this book here is 2013, but what I'm doing, Experience from Hell, which undergo testing. We got to go through these testing. Experience from heaven, which undergo. This is necessary to test the, the Lord want to test our faith and our blessing, okay, to see if we, the individual hold on to what has been revealed to him. You hear what he's saying in this? God can test us to see if you're really who you say you are. Can you hold? Sometimes we test different things. They, they make cars. You know, Ford, but they make the kind of test drive. Make sure I can hold. Now, they have some recoil back on cars. You all better find out. They, 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 they're fallible. Okay? I'm telling you. It was impossible for divine son to sin. And that actually heightens the test. You know, he could not give into the test and sin, but he had to endure until the test were completed. You better stay in the race. Stay in the fiery line. We are on test. Some of you are on test right now. Some of you on trial is coming. I'm telling you, if you, when the tempter came to Jesus, the first, I'm going to skip to that. You all going to Jesus was truly the son of God. He found what Jesus did not have power to turn stone. He, Jesus did have power to turn stone into bread and would have met his human physical hunger for food to have done this. What he's saying is Jesus, Jesus wasn't listening to the devil and you can't listen to him because he can tell you to do this and do next thing. Just rebuke him in Jesus' name. Okay? Because Jesus, you have power to do things, but you know what God is calling you to do. Okay? Jesus wisely did what we should do when resisting the devil. He used the word of God by quoting. He used the word of God by quoting. Deuteronomy 8 and 3. We need to be armed with the word always. Whether it is in fast or carrying out any other directive thing from heaven. You better know how to quote corporate prayer. Corporate prayer. This second Chronicles. We hear this all this week. All through this year. And last year. Second Chronicles 7. 12 to 15. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves, pray, seek my face. Okay, I'm going to most of your and mine eyes shall be open and my ears shall attend unto the prayer. That, that's the one. People don't, people don't go on the 15th. Now mine eyes shall be open and my ear attend unto thy prayer. That is made in this place. You got to believe that. You got to believe. Once you don't say 14, you got to believe, but you got to turn. Okay? Solomon completed the temple, and I'm going to skip that long here. He assured Solomon that his prayer was answered. Okay, the temple would be sanctified and become God's own house. What are you praying for God for? What are you asking God for? You need to ask God and believe. Solomon, just like Solomon, he asked God that people keep his commandment of love. Solomon asked that God keep his covenant of love. And God will keep his covenant of love with his people. That's what Solomon asked. What are you asking God for? For your community, for your church, for your family. 99.9 .9, Cleveland, Polk County, Bradley County, Charleston, Athens, all of y'all in this area. You better get ready. I'm telling you. You better get ready. That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to leave that right there because I'm going to finish my lesson. Because you're living in a holy land. You're living in an area where people are constantly praying and fasting. I'm connected. We was in prayer meeting yesterday at the Tanova Hospital. We go from house to house, church, business, institution. And God is in this land. He lives here. Our theme is the city with the Holy Spirit. And we know who we are and we can stand for who we are. If you move in this community, you need to know what you move into. You move into the Holy Mountains. You move into Jerusalem. Makers. You move into the, 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 the Pentecostal movement earthquake. So I just want you to know, I'm putting that piece out right there, but I got to finish this lesson, okay? Let you know what you, what you, uh, 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 most of y'all came up for good school. I know this one of the best areas to raise family, Chattanooga areas, talk. And, and Cleveland raise family, income, school, and everything. But you come into here to get a blessing from the Lord. So you better get 
get, get, get with it. Like they say, get with it and just do it. But he will turn for me. Let me see. God has an eternal covenant with Israel. I don't need to skip this part of Israel. What he's saying here. God responded by saying this. There will be judgment for sin. Um, second Corinthians. Second. This is. Let me read it. Second Chronicles 7 and 13. But if the people would turn to him in humility. And turn repentance. Okay. They would have forgiveness and restoration. Verse 14. I'm telling you this is deep. This is corporate prayer. This is for all of us. We need to get it together. God had an eternal covenant with Israel. You know, study Israel and know what he's saying with Israel. Since Christians are adopted sons of God, we can. Okay, Christians are adopted sons of God. We can claim covenant blessings because we are adopted as joint heirs with Christ. Romans 8 and 17. You are, you are joined us with Christ. We're talking about Christ now. We carry our Father, cry our Father. Thus, we, uh, 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 thus if we sin, we can humbly ourselves repent. I just told you that. Seek His first. And then turn and receive the promise in Second Chronicles 7 for the new covenant. Okay, equivalent to promises is found in the word John. If we confess, it's John 1, 1 John 1 and 9. Go in 1 John 1 and 9. Okay, find that. Okay, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us, forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all. See the supposed of all, everything, all. God is so gracious, he's so kind, he's willing that all should come to repentance. Cleanse us all, okay? He's a good God, he's a, he's a mighty God, he's a loving God, okay? He ain't have no hidden agenda for both Israel and believers today, okay? For all of us. If so, the key word, if we are honest before him, that's when you're going to be genuinely, sincerely honest from your heart. Be honest. Okay, nothing to hit. Confess your sins. Okay, and he'll forgive you. If we want God to forgive us, we must, we must clearly acknowledge our sin and turn away from it. Clearly acknowledge your sins. Acknowledge. The power of agreement, Matthew 18, 18 through 20. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall bind in heaven on earth and bound in heaven. 19 says, and I say unto you, that two of you shall agree on earth and touching and believing God. Study it. 20 says, for two or three gathering together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. That's why I say prayer warriors, intercessions, groups of praying in the name of Jesus. A statement similar to this is made in Jesus. Peter just oh, asked. Okay, let me, I'm skipping up to some of this. Okay, um, Peter used the keys on the days of Pentecost to open the doors of the gospel so that all those responding in faith will come into the kingdom. Later he did the same with Cornelius by opening the door for the Gentiles when in the kingdom. Okay, everybody, God open doors, open the door, Peter. The contents binding and loosening, and, and you all got to study that on you. He was looking forward to the time when he would not be um, um, boldly, um, um, when he would not be boldly, present but rather present through the holy spirit holy spirit lives in us and he lives in you once you come to know him as your personal sin you ask him he will live in you he will guide you he'll protect you you have angels you got to warn this when all personal means of reconciliation have been exhausted with an offending brother or no resolution reach the authority then belong to the church you have a problem and you can't resolve it with the brother or sister who offend you or whatever go to the church or get someone in between Okay, let's get these things right. Okay, we need to live right. We need to live godly. Many churches getting ready to open. Make sure when you come back, you come back with new attitude, new spirit, ready to worship God. If you have ought against your brother, let's get that clear for you. Get back in. The promise in verse 19 is that prayer will be answered if two agree provides additional proof that the prayerful decision of the congregation and disciplinary action will be divinely honored. It's the word of God. The promise pertaining to united prayer must be considered in the light of God's, in the light of Christ's other teaching on the subject. Go into go in other subjects on that in 1 John 5 and 14. There's so much in this, and I got to hurry up because I want you to know this is that, you know, it's like what God is doing. We are joining in what he's doing in these days. We are just applying what has already been in the Bible, and we just using it. Okay, but what we have to do is make sure we are not being selfish with it. We need to share it. 
There is amazing power available to the church. When its members come together, we need to get our members, those who are weak, okay? Those who are weak, um, 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 all y'all online and who can see WOP, we gotta get, we have to be friendly, we have to be kind, be nice. Let's share this gospel and let's help those. Yes, yeah, some people are mean, some people are nasty and hateful, but you know what? God called us to be light and be salt. Let them see us living right. The sincere agreement of two people is more powerful than the than the, and the superficial agreement of those who, whatever they're saying, you know, people, they're not real, they're not genuine, they're fakey, you know, they just seem right. But God is calling us to be genuine, to be real, okay? And when we come together in prayer, and we come agree, okay? And he knows, we know the super, superficial people, you know, they gotta, we got to pray for them, that they will do right. You know, hypocritical people, I'm telling you, this ain't no time to be a hypocrite in the church. You have to repent. You know, you come in, and especially leaders, you got to be real. I, let me finish. Acknowledge God's power, Acts 4, 23. Acknowledge and being let go. They went in their own company and reported all that the chief priests and the elders had them. And when they heard that they lifted up their voice, See, Lord, in the scripture, they lifted their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, thou hast made heaven and earth and the sea and all that. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken and they assembled together and they all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spoke boldly, they spoke the word of God boldly. Go and go and go and ask for and get a Peter and John. Okay. The story is with Peter and John. They had been released from jail after having healed. Listen to the story. And listen, this, this is happening to all of us. You're going to go through it if you haven't gone through it yet. This is just part of the maturity in Christ, okay? As you grow in Christ, you're going to go through some testing. and You can go through some things. But yours got to apply different from mine and what other people go through. Some will be racist, some will be prejudiced, some will be just pure hatred. And God's going to test your faith. If you want to be up there in, in leadership, you got to know how to deal with people who down there. So you got to know what you've been through. Have you been tested? The Bible said we all come by the words of our mouth and our testimony. We got to tell our testimony. Only people just think you just arrived. You've been through some stuff. I told you my story last week. Pain, sickness, and more and more and more. And you got to tell your story. People know where you come from. Because Peter and Paul, I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm summarized because of their uh, uh, um, legacy of, the, of, of miracles. Okay, the Jews' authority had been put into quarantine, and they went through so much. They couldn't deny the man healing more eloquence of two disciples. These were uneducated men, and they said they transformed into the powerful preachers. See, people don't like when God doesn't change. You know, you come from nowhere. You done being out there in the world. You done do all these things. Now you say you're preaching. They're going to they gonna scorn you. They're going to talk. Say, no, no, no. They're going to try to just bring someone. You, uh, you all know what I'm saying. But you stand firm, because after the Peter and John, you know, and you know Peter and John, they, 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 uh, 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 what happened to the story? You got to read the story. Go in there and read it. The lame man, what they begin, all they could do was arrest them, hold them overnight, bring them before the Sanhedrin, that Sanhedrin, and try to scare them into staying quiet. The Lord Jesus. Now, most of you know me. You know you can't keep me quiet for long when it comes to the word of God. I could be quiet. But when the Lord speaking, the Bible said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And I said, He has anointed me to preach the gospel, to set the prisoners free, to set the captive free. Those in prison, those in need. Open your mouth. You know what God has called you? The Bible said in Matthew 20, 20, 20, Go ye into all the world, preach the gospel, baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Say, Lo, I am with you all the way, even to the end of the world. Don't let no one shut you up. Open your mouth and preach this gospel and teach. People are hungry. People are more receptive coming to God right now. You see it on the internet. Many ministries on the internet now. People are hungry. Some people are still not wanting to come up to it, but they were going in there. That's why we go through, put this on Facebook. Why you see me come on as often as I can? Because I want people to know Jesus. I love Jesus and I'm waiting for him. And you ought to love Jesus the same. He loves you. He died for you. And he warned that all should come to repentance. Only when people are going to come, we got to keep preaching the word. Some people, they got to hear it over and over. They just got to keep hearing it from different people. And they will finally get it. And we got to make sure they get it some way or the other. Okay, and that's what Peter and John did. They tried to shut them up. Peter and John had boldly used the opportunity to proclaim the gospel. They put them in jail. They preached in jail. You know, they, when they came with the lame man, they healed the man. 
and the power of Jesus. These same Jewish leaders had been responsible for Jesus' death. See how many same people? You see so many same people who are doing evil? God's going to get you. You better stop. You better repent. Because it's, it's going to come back on you. The stone which rejected by you, uh, 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 by, by you um, builders has become the chief cornerstone. Look in verse 11. In short, the anointed apostle had indicated their own accusers. I can leave that right there. Once released, the men quickly, they quickly, they didn't waste no time. And some of us, we didn't get much more time left, you know. They quickly returned to find the other believers. Let's look for the believers. Quickly get back into the church. Wear your mask. Get online. Get on Facebook. Let's do what we got to do quickly. There was a sudden realization that this was the persecutor to persecution ahead. At the same time, they were air by the anointing which had come over them to heal. Okay? To seek and to present the gospel. This is the time. I just told you that. People are dying of COVID. People are scared. Many people are afraid. And here they talk about another plague and all these things everywhere. Look what's going on all over the world. Check your area. And we who are called. The prayer meeting that now occur had a sense of urgency. Okay? And rest. But also one of Bold determination to carry out their mission. They didn't care. Okay? The people were of one heart and one mind. I said, we got to be united, church. We got to be united people. One heart, one mind. Enemy cannot get in when we are in unity, in prayer, especially in fasting and seeking God's face. We got to know this. Okay? Their prayer in verse 25 and 20 was based on Psalms 2. Psalms 2. I want you to get that because this is one of my favorite Bible scriptures. I know how to quote it. I better go because it's, it's in this international thing. It says, why do the heathen range? And the people imagine a vain thing. The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers took counsel together against the Lord. Now, guess where I'm coming back now. Y'all listen, this is where this come from. There is nothing more powerful than praying the word of God for it is praying his, in his name. Okay? In Psalms 2, this is what was going on, what the people were doing. And Psalms 2, that's how David wrote the Psalms. This is what was going on back then. What you think going on now here in America? Listen to it. I'm going I'm to try. He said, why do the, why, why are the nations, I'm going to put it more in terms so you could, why are the nations so angry? Why do they waste their time with fertile plants? Look what the people saying now. The kings of the earth prepare for battle. The rulers plot together against the Lord now. And against his anointed one. This is what version of version I'm reading from. This is life application. I can see about eight Bibles, and I ain't read this one in a while. Okay, let us break their chains. They cried. They cried and free ourselves from slavery of God. But the one who rules in heaven laugh. That's God. The Lord scorns of them. Okay, then the anger, he rebukes them. Terrifying that they were fairest furry. For the Lord declare, I have placed my chosen king on the throne in Jerusalem. On my holy mountain, the king proclaims the Lord's decree. The Lord said to me, you are my son. Today, I have become your father. As for somebody there, today you need to give God your heart. Only ask that I will give you the nations as you inherit the whole world as your possession. Ooh, I didn't read this because I didn't read this yet. I know mine, mine through the King James Version. I got to stick with this. God said he can give you. It's the modern term now. The whole world as your possession. You will break them with an iron rod and smash them like a clay pot. Now then, you kings, act wisely. Be warned, your rulers of the earth. Your rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with reverence, fear. Reverence, fear. Okay, not this worldly fear. Reverence, reverence, fear. And rejoice with trembling. Sometimes we come before God, become holy, submit to God's royal son, or he will become angry. And you will be destroyed in the midst of all your activities, for his anger flare up in an instant. But what joy for all who take refuge in him. That's Psalms 2. Study that Psalms 2. That's what was going on. This is what God was saying, replying back to it. Let me finish this because I got to go. Um, and there is nothing more powerful than, and I just said, that they prayed not for deliverance from opposition, you know. Yeah, opposition going to come. And yes, if you want to pray for deliverance, God, can you pray for them for them? 
But what I'm here to let you know, if you pray in God's word and you stand on, you ain't got to worry about opposition. They come in. That's just natural. And no matter what you do in the classrooms, you can have oppos you can have competition, opposition, no matter what you do. Just accept that. Okay, that's fact. Okay, but they would accomplish. They, let me read this right. They prayed not for deliverance from opposition, but that they will accomplish God's will in the midst of the circumstances. You see, that's what I'm saying. In the midst of it. Don't worry. They ask for empowerment, not for an escape. Don't try to get out of what God called you to do. Ask him to help you. Ask him for strength. Let me, let, me, let me close this up. When Peter and John met with their fellow believers after being released from jail, let me tell you what happened. When you don't come out yourself, you're coming out of, 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 of whatever going on in your life. They all together pray in one accord. Okay, they use Psalms 2. That's what they get Psalms 2. We are told that any one person was leading. We are told not. We are not told that any one person was leading the prayer, but that they corporately prayed the word. They prayed Psalms 2 corporately. Okay, prophetically. They described the nation revolting against God and his anointed. My God, I come against God. Oh, you are better. Watch that. Watch that. Be careful. God, I'm telling you. They recognized that this was describing their own situation. Don't we see that in what people want to, they want to be God. They could be their little God, but I'm going to tell you, it's only one true God. And don't play and don't try with God. John, don't show the box. Don't mess with God. I'm telling you, you better humble yourself. Repent and seek his face. They recognized that this was describing their own situation. They could see that God laughed at the fertile acts of rebellions by means. Thus, adversaries such as Herod, Pilate, the unbelieving Jewish leader, and the Roman authority could not stand against the message they carry. See, when you preach the word, and you be real, and God is leading you, the Holy Ghost is leading you, and guiding you, and you got power, and you got authority, my God, nothing, nothing, nothing. People who come, they'll humble themselves. Just give them time. You may have to go three times. Go three times and talk to them. Yeah, they, they were... On super, let me see what they said. They were on supernatural mission. Not no superficial, not, not no fakey stuff. They were on supernatural mission. That's what they mean to be serious, but governing by supernatural power from on high. We need God's power. Yet they realized that they had personally their responsibility as well. Okay? We have to know who we are and know what God called us to do. We are in his hands and we know we are the only hand and feet. We are the only mouth he got. They knew they shall pray as though everything depend on God. Let me go, no God, but equally work as though the mission depend on them. What he's saying is, we are to go. God called us to go and do, do it, but we depend on God. Okay, I set my face, this is going there, on to seek by prayer and supplication with fasting, to seek, praise, worship, choir, all of that. Sackcloth, ashes, all at Daniel 9 and 3. Daniel set his face towards God in order to seek him. In the words set, in this implying giving one of himself over to someone or something, Daniel prayerful, Daniel's prayerful stance was an act of commitment in which he gave himself completely to God. And I thought, I said, we got to completely. And I dedicate myself like Daniel, I'm going to get more done. I'm completely, I've been there, but sometimes when you see you got to be totally, completely committed to God. Prayer for Daniel was more than words. It was directing of his innermost desire to God through communication with him. Prayer emphasized intercession and medication. Make me say, man, I probably need my medication. Meditation. Come on. Yes, I take medication. I'm telling you, Daniel was approaching God on behalf of the need for which he had a burden. Do you have burden for your church, burden for your family, burden for individual, burden for your community? You got to avoid supplication, emphasize, entreating the favor, mercy, and grace of another. Daniel was not demanding from God, but was revengefully approaching him. Okay? He was approaching God, offering his requests and making confession on behalf of his countrymen. United States, America, we need to come on behalf of America. Come behalf of our prime minister. Our president, President Trump. No, who's the president? Y'all forgive me. President Biden, okay? And Miss Harris, we got to come. And all our political leaders, y'all know all them by name. Your Governor Lee, we got Governor Lee in Tennessee. He come on be especially prayer concerning a desperate need and for which a revelation, we need revelation of 
the salutation was sought. Sackcloth and ashes were the traditional signs of mourning and thus were considered appropriate as shown in contradiction before God. Ashes signify weightlessness. Okay, disputing the weightlessness. We 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 all filthy rags. We are dust. We going back to dust. Sometimes some of us think, you know, we we gotta realize who we are. We ashes, fluing the useful purpose. Daniel affirmed in humility that he was in himself unworthy to approach God. Okay, because of Daniel's lack of understanding, he turned to the one who is in source of all wisdom and knowledge. As we have God give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, he know the word of God, but he did not approach God casually or effectively. Okay, he said here, too often our tendency today is to approach God lightly, almost, you know, not caring attitude. But prayer itself is discipline. And the more seriously our need is, the more intense and agonizing our prayer must be. Some of us, yes, you know, you may have to agonize God all night, three nights, uh, a, a weekend prayer, get a revival, just crying out and pray. You know, you know what your needs are. God is willing. So you don't know Jesus. And now I want to tell you, ask God to come in the heart. I'm going to have to get some of these other prayer. A lot of other prayer I had in here to read. And I have a book on fasting. Get your Bible and read your book on fasting and stuff like that. God is able to help you. Okay? God is able to help you. Father, I come. Those who don't know you, I wish they would take ABC, their Lord, to acknowledge you as God. Just to recognize and ask you, their Lord Jesus, their God, to believe your word. They'll believe your word, their God, and they'll confess and say, come into my heart. Ask God to come into your heart. Say, Jesus, I love you. I know you died on the cross for me. Forgive me of my sin, their Lord Jesus, their God. I confess right now. I ask you, take it away, their God, because I know, their God, Jesus, you are coming back, and I want to be ready. And for me to be ready, dear Lord, I know I have to read my Bible. I have to live right and pray. So God is willing to do great things for you. Jesus, if you have done that, read more of your Bible and tell someone, okay? Get connected to someone who can help you more. God bless you. Amen.